Hey there guys, Frank Matic here with the next two stages of Panic Restaurant. As you can see, I've gone through most of the uh, uh, slot machine for you, so you don't have to see it again. Anyways, up next is Salad, which has even less to do with Salad than anything else. But right there, see that thing up at the top? That is very important, because it is awesome. There are the dishes! The game's main... Actually, aside from one point only, I believe, long-range weapon. It's got a bit of an arc to it, so if you're higher up than your enemy, it's kind of hard to hit him, but it's a easily one of, if not the best weapon in the game. And one that I strive to keep at all times, when it's available. Since you don't have to get anywhere near your opponent to use it, it's easily the safest, and therefore easiest to hold on to, because you won't get hit. Unless, of course... If you're like me and are an idiot. But anyways, this is one of the tougher parts of the game. Precision jumping onto bubbles over death liquid. And annoying snail cups. But don't gotta worry about those. Not yet. Anyways, remember what I said about being an idiot? Here it is. See that hat? I really wanted that one up there. And I fuck up and end up with a fork. In an area where you have to go through narrow passageways with enemies on the top and bottom, and fire going. Yeah. This was pretty much expected, as I now get my ass completely destroyed by cups. And fire. And... a cup delivers the coup de gras. The coup de gras. Coup de grace, for those of us who are not French. But coup de gras, because that is correct. At least I hadn't gone too far past the start when that happened, so let's just get back to where we were. The fork is nowhere to be seen, but that made me realize that that jump is probably impossible from that direction, so I decided to just abandon the one up. See, when you're not being a retard, this section is actually very easy. But it's very difficult for me not to be stupid, so... You can see where I had some trouble. The spoon is not the best replacement for the dishes that I lost, but it'll do. And instead of elevators, we now have boiling pots that pop their tops. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, I didn't think so either. But we do have something special coming up in just a couple of seconds. Something extra special, my friends. Toasters that shoot out toast at you. Isn't that surprising? Well, actually, it just looks like bread. But on top of that, we also have something else. Check this out. A bonus stage. Take the egg. What could they possibly mean by that? They mean you're going to be controlling a hand holding onto a frying pan with extremely slippery left and right controls while birds scream overhead and drop bombs and eggs on you. You want to catch the bombs and avoid... Wait. Catch the eggs and avoid the bombs. Catching a bomb ends your round immediately. I don't know what happens if you manage to catch every egg that they drop, because I'm pretty damn sure that's impossible, since, uh... As I mentioned, the controls are extremely slippery, and they tend to drop them in patterns that make it so you have to miss at least one. But I do know that for each egg you get, you get 100 points. Isn't that awesome? You also get warped further ahead in the level. What do we have here? Everybody's favorite gameplay mechanic, conveyor belts! And deadly toast. Thank you for that candy, otherwise I would have been down too. But you know what? I didn't lose my spoon. Screw you, game. This part used to give me trouble when I was younger, but... Not anymore, so now I actually get to claim that 1-up. Because as you remember, if you died on those parts, the 1-up wouldn't come back. That will become important later, trust me. Man, playing this game makes me really hungry. I kinda want a hot dog now. Not a hot dog on toast, though, it's just weird. But... Or anything, really. I, have, I actually, uh... I haven't had lunch yet, that's probably what the problem is. So, the boss! It's a wok that... with a rain of shrimp. 
After it catches a certain number of them, it spits out fried shrimp. Except for down here, where it just moves a little bit and spits out fried shrimp and then dies because I beat the shit out of it with a spoon. And that... was salad. I took the liberty of speeding this up this time, so you don't have to watch me burn through 24 coins at the minimum possible speed. And as last time, I will do most of the spinning after the next level off screen, so you don't have to watch it. But anyways, yes, I'm a giant loser again. And it's time for some fish. I love fish. I would eat it all the time if I could. And despite the map showing that we appear to be inside, we are now outside. And we are getting attacked by chairs and shish kebabs. The kebabs are actually not as hard as I'm making it look like to dodge. You just have to not jump into them repeatedly, and you'll be fine. All you have to do really is stand in place and duck, and they'll usually miss you. And the chairs jump way early, so you can just hit them while they're jumping at you. We're also going to see another old friend, Franken Chicken! And a more important old friend, Dishes. So after making that extremely complicated jump, we now have the best weapon ever. Any bets I lose it within seconds? Ha! You were wrong. Also, enemies can just run through doors without opening them. Good to know. These clouds are basically mobile versions of the chandeliers from the second level. They spit lightning straight down. That hurts you. Those knives are instant death spike pits. Keep that in mind for later. And putting a guy that spits lightning right over a ladder, that's totally a dick move, and I do not appreciate it, game. But it's okay, because you can scroll off the screen really quickly. And our female carrots, guarding a spoon that I don't even want. I wonder why the carrots are women in this. Maybe they're not, they're just wearing lipstick. I'm not sure which is weirder. Although I'm sure I'm pretty sure the weirdest the weirdness king in this is still the running fry uh, roasted chickens. Ah yes, the lollipops. They have one other benefit. If you have full a full health meter, they fill it up to full. That was worded really poorly. If you have the maximum amount of health meters God damn it. If you have the maximum amount of health points in your meter, it will fill you up to full when you pick it up. If you're not at full health. Uh, you get what I'm trying to say. That is the one bad thing about the dishes. You're not very quick on the draw when you come off the ladder. <coughs> and the reason for me failing that uh, grab repeatedly, just to lose the weapon I spent all that time getting, was because I didn't want to have to go, th go past the uh, cups and risk getting that fork again. But it didn't matter, because I lost my awesome weapon anyway. And just from looking at the at the layout of the level here, I'm pretty sure you can see why I didn't want the fork. A pogo stick weapon is not awesome in this. Anyways, ladder to nowhere, what could that mean? Yep, another bonus stage. Since it's exactly the same, I sped this up too, so you don't have to watch it at slow motion. Needless to say, I do worse. But it doesn't really matter. It's only points. And I've got plenty of points. 78,400 of them, to be exact. Aha! Invincibility. Invincibility is their best friend. You know what happens when invincibility mixes with spikes, though? You die anyway. So don't do that. That one up is a trap for that purpose, and I fell right into it because I am retarded. But it doesn't matter, we're close to the end of this stage anyway. As you might have noticed, they're getting longer now. So, uh, I'm still going to try and fit two in a day, but it might end up being one a day for the last two, depending on how long they are, because I don't remember. It's been a while. But first, we have to get through the Carrot Army. My dodging skills are top-notch. As are my panning skills. Because I pan everything I've ever talked about. Because that's how I roll. 
and I have no idea what I'm really talking about anymore. But anyways, through this door, we have the most terrifying boss ever. Or not. I lied. It's actually through the next door. Although running tur uh, chickens and kebabs are kind of frightening. Anyways, most terrifying boss ever. A giant hamburger with eyes. You have to hit the beat patty to, in to injure it. And if you're not playing like I am, he's actually not that tough. But you can also beat him by playing like an idiot as long as you have at least two hit points because all you have to do is beat the shit out of him every time you get a chance, and he dies really quickly. So anyways, next time, meat and possibly dessert. Later.